In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear sisters and brothers, to this Eucharist. Uh, keep well, hope you're keeping well, and open yourselves to the Lord, to receive the Lord. Spiritual communion because there are no, there's no audience over here, and uh, we'll pray for each other. We, there are many intentions this morning, which have been placed, and I want to add one more. Uh, just got news, it's the, that's the month's mind of uh, some a friend of mine, Sister Dina, who was working in California, and she passed away. Uh, she was Sister of Charity, worked there for I think over 50 years, uh, much appreciated, much loved. And, uh, we, we pray for all of her, uh, all uh, for her and all her relatives and friends and uh, admirers. We pray that uh, God gives her eternal rest. Now let's begin the sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking his forgiveness for our sins, opening ourselves. We are at the beginning of the year, asking him, what does the Lord want us to do during this coming year? You made your commitment, I hope, on, on the Feast of the Baptism of our Lord, and we continue to reinforce that commitment, as I also try to do so. And so we say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Attend to the pleas of your people with heavenly care, O Lord, we pray, that they may see what must be done and gain strength to do what they have seen. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the reading. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, 
here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down. And if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as it other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that, that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord, thanks, thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our response, see, I have come, Lord, to do your will. Together, see, I have come, Lord, to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord, and he has not gone over to the proud who follows false gods. Our response, see, I have come, Lord, to do your will. You delight not in sacrifice and offerings, but in an open year. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Then I said, see, I have come. Our response, see, I have come, Lord, to do your will. In the scroll of the book, it stands written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your instruction lies deep within me. Our response, see, I have come, Lord, to do your will. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Our response, see, I have come, Lord, to do your will. Can you stand for the gospel? Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever. Immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. He healed many who were sick with various diseases, cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Rising very early in the morning, when it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also. For that is what I came for. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We heard the beautiful reading from the first book of Samuel, and uh, there is this 
priest, Eli or Eli, or the priest uh, over there. And Samuel, remember, uh, Hannah had promised his mother that if she has a child, she'll offer him to the Lord. And she offered him to the Lord. And Samuel, like, like an altar boy, helping out there and uh, doing some work, little sacristy work, as it were, and uh, was staying. Eli himself was staying in the temple itself, praying over there. And then, then Samuel hears the voice once, and naturally, uh, Eli thinks that he's uh, dreaming, and therefore says, now go to sleep. Second time, go to sleep. When it happened a third time, he says, now say, speak, Lord. And uh, he said, maybe it's a revelation from God. And here we have, and then there's a passage we, are re we have read, Samuel 1, uh, Samuel chapter 3, uh, 1 to 10. And then the w next verses are omitted, and then we have the last. And there uh, we have in the reading, the Bible, that Yahweh spoke to Samuel, told him about the weaknesses of the people of Israel, preparing him to be really a prophet, preparing him to be a successor to Eli. Because uh, the difficulty was of uh, this prophet, this Eli was a priest, uh, he was holy, he tried to do his best, but his children, they said, were exploiters. Exploiters and cheating, offerings which people brought to God, the temple, they were trying to keep for themselves, and God was upset, Yahweh was upset. And uh, told him the family will be destroyed, they were going to end, and then, uh, and told him to, didn't tell him to prepare himself, that will come later. Uh, Samuel really begins, and then finally he reveals that we have that passage. He tells Eli what God told him. So we have here uh, a God directly calling and giving a mission, as it were, to Samuel. Now, next Sunday, uh, uh, we were supposed to have the vocation Sunday, the Archdiocese of Bombay, and I think Vasai also. And uh, I advised the vocation promoters because of the lockdown, and, and not there's no lockdown, but there's diminished uh, participation allowed, 50, uh, to postpone. So we'll have the vocation. It was vocation Sunday, and very appropriate. This gospel is so appropriate. Where God is calling. And I mentioned the last Sunday when, that God has a mission for each one of us. We might not have him call us directly John or Michael or Mary or Ruth, uh, but uh, you have, uh, we know God has got a mission for each one of us in the family, in society, place of work, in our parish, we've got to fulfill a role. And if we don't fulfill it, no one else will. That will be a, a something unfinished business, undone work in the building of the kingdom of God. See what God wants of you. See what God is asking of us. Uh, that's really the message of today's first reading. Mark, we continue, and we really mark uh, till uh, we come to Ash Wednesday, till the or next few weeks. Samuel will have for the next three weeks, and Mark carries on till the Ash Wednesday, which is early March, I think the 3rd of March or so. And now we have got uh, uh, here the very beginnings of Jesus' ministry. On the, on the Sabbath day, he would go to the synagogue and read. That was his practice. That was the Jewish practice, and Jesus abided by the... And he would read, he would teach over there in the synagogue. Whenever, wherever he was, go to the synagogue and preach. And then uh, here, he tells... He has just chosen uh, Peter, Andrew, John, and James. Four, he's got four apostles, or four disciples. Uh, still there, disciples. And... Uh, after preaching, he want, he tells, we, in the map they show that Peter's house rather was rather close, about five to ten minutes walk from the synagogue, very close. And so Jesus tells Peter, we're coming to your house perhaps for lunch. And then uh, he, re uh, he knows, he's told that uh, his mother-in-law is sick. So, and Jesus goes and holds her by the hand and note she's cured. She's cured completely and instantly. You see the miracle? It's not a medicine. It's a, it's a sign that he has the power. Jesus is, I think, teaching his four apostles 
strengthening their vocation. First part is about a vocation. He is strengthening by his teaching. He takes them to the synagogue to hear what he's saying. Now he works a miracle. And then, he said in the evening after sundown, because before sundown was still the Sabbath, so they could not, people could not move about much. Then after sundown, that's what they said, they all brought all the sick people. They saw, they came to know that here's a special man. They asked for a blessing, but he gave them full cure. He, and then the next, then, then we end, it ends by him early in the morning going to pray. As praying to the Father, and we often ask and often reflect, what did Jesus talk to the Father? Probably talk to the Father and reflected, what is my mission? God is one, and we, it's a mystery, sisters and brothers. I know some of the questions come, trying, struggling to understand the mystery of the Trinity. All of us are struggling to understand. We will understand it more, but perhaps never completely, only when we go up. But uh, probably asking about what he should do. And then immediately he responds, let's not stay here. We've got to go to other villages also. Because people must have wanted to come to be cured and miracles, but he had to go to other places also to preach. Let's once again uh, think of our, what God wants of us to transform society, to make of the church, to make of society, to make of our city a better place, really a kingdom of God. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in his divinity, who offer himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased. Receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May your people's oblation, O Lord, find favor with you, we pray, that it may restore them to holiness, obtain what they devoutly entreat. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. just. This truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man. When he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him. Through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name. He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Lord.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be quested on a life, praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. To you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence of the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, safe from all distress. As we wait in joyful hope, for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ and your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, the us with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. The sign of peace. Christ's peace be with each one of you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, 
to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Humbly we ask you, Almighty God, be graciously pleased to grant that those you renew with your sacraments may also serve with lives pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass Senate, let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God bless each one of you. I'll see you tomorrow. Keep well and we'll pray for each other. Prayer for Relief from the Coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle, that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Colors of day dawn into the mind The sun has come up the night is behind go down in the city into the street and let's give the message to the people we meet so light up the fire let the flame burn open the door let jesus return take seeds of his spirit let the fruit grow tell the people of jesus let his love show so light up the fire let the flame burn open the door let jesus return take seeds of his spirit let the fruit grow tell the people of jesus let his love show